Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to answer part B of this question here. So the question is all about public goods and vertical summation. The vertical summation I did in part A and I'll link to that video below in the description. In that video we found the diagram that I have here and also the algebraic representation of our social marginal benefit function. So a lot of the background stuff is in that first video and I strongly suggest that you go through that video first if you haven't already. Now in part B, we are asked, what happens if the price slash marginal cost of recreational parks is equal to $80? What about if the price slash marginal cost is equal to $120? And here where I've identified price and marginal cost, that's just to say, let's say we're in perfect competition, so price is equal to marginal cost. On our diagram then, just thinking about that first part where price marginal cost is 80, actually that will come through as a line like this. Now at this price of 80, you can see that it's above Mary's marginal benefit, Mary's demand, that's the green line, but below Joe's individual demand curve, that's the blue line. And in fact, our price of 80 intersects Joe's demand curve. So Joe will demand some positive number of recreational parks. And in fact, substituting in the price of 80 into Joe's demand curve, we see that, well, just using the expression up here, 80 is equal to 100 minus QJ, and this solves for QJ is equal to 20. And I'll put that on our diagram here. Now, Mary does not demand any recreational parks at this price. Her willingness to pay, her demand is just not high enough. But as we discussed in part A, however, our recreational parks is a public good. It's both non-rivalrous and non-excludable. So if the price was 80, Joe would buy 20 recreational parks, but Mary could use and get marginal benefit from those quantities, those parks that Joe buys. So this situation is what we call free riding. Mary is benefiting from a purchase that she didn't actually contribute to, she didn't pay for. Now there are a whole lot of ways that we can get free riding. In this case, we've got a public good, which is being purchased by a private individual. Now you might think that recreational parks are not good examples of public goods and I did talk about this in part A but if you are really not convinced just replace the good recreational parks with another good that you do think is a good example of a public good maybe lighthouses or street lights in order to get that intuition of how we get a free riding problem in these sorts of examples. Now apart from free riding another problem that we can see here is with underproduction. If we assume that the marginal cost of production includes all costs, so there are no externalities in production, then we can actually identify our marginal cost here as being equal to our social marginal cost. And this means that our socially efficient amount that we should be producing is actually here where our social marginal benefit curve is equal to our social marginal cost curve. I won't get into the theory too much here because I think it's best left to a video all on its own. It's enough to say that theoretically, this is the point of production we should be aiming for if we want to be efficient. So that quantity Q star, and you can see it's greater than 20. So buying 20 would be an underproduction. Now we can actually find the numerical value for our Q star by setting our social marginal benefit and our social marginal cost functions equal to one another and then solving for the quantity. Our social marginal benefit is equal to 140 minus 4Q on 3. We found that expression in part A and I'm using the equation that is associated with quantities less than or equal to 100 since I can see visually that's where our intersection lies. And our social marginal cost is 80. I can solve for that quantity variable then and I'm going to start by taking 140 away from both sides. So I get negative 4Q on 3 is equal to negative 60. We can multiply both sides by negative 3 and we get 4Q is equal to 180. We then divide both sides by 4 and we get the quantity is equal to 45. That's our Q star, our efficient amount. And so clearly then you can see Joe's purchasing of 20 recreational parks would definitely be an underproduction. Now the next case where our price marginal cost is 120 will give us another example of underproduction, but it will be more severe. In this case, let me draw it in. You can see the price is too high for either Joe or Mary to purchase the recreational park. So if we left the provision of our recreational parks up to the free market, in this case, it just wouldn't be produced. We can see from our diagram though, again, assuming that there are no externalities in production. 
so marginal cost is equal to our social marginal cost, that the optimal amount of recreational parks is indeed positive. It's here. We can do the algebra again. Our social marginal benefit is 140 minus 4Q13, and our marginal cost is 120. Taking 140 away from either side, we get negative 4Q13 is equal to negative 20. Multiply both sides by negative 3, and we get 4Q is equal to 60. Divide both sides by 4, and we see that the optimal quantity is 15. That's the efficient amount, and that's on our diagram there. And here in our little example, we've demonstrated two concerns about leaving the provision of public goods up to the free market. We can run into problems associated with free riding, and we can also underproduce relative to the optimum. So that's it for this question. I hope that this video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are having a good one.